I'm not positive that our videographer owns clothing that doesn't have the Broncos logo on it. Uh, hi, folks. Uh, Nate Lundy, Sean Drotar, 5280 Sports Network, your morning minute on a Wednesday. Welcome to it. Uh, let's talk a little basketball here, Sean. The uh, Nuggets have five games in the next week, and then they will hit the uh, All-Star break, uh, which lasts for eight days for them. Uh, but they've got three in a row on the road, then they finish off with two at home. But it is a rough schedule overall. Atlanta is in there, the Knicks are in there, the Cavs and Warriors are in there, and then the Minnesota Timberwolves to close things out before they get to the All-Star break. Um, we know this is not a one seed, two seed, three seed in the West kind of team. Um, so maybe that tempers our expectations. But what does this team need to do in these five games before the break for you to feel good? Well, first thing, they have to beat the teams they should beat, the Knicks and the Timberwolves. Those are teams that they're better than. They're teams they should beat. So they have to get two out of those five. Tonight, they play Atlanta. You'd like to see them see if they can steal one. You don't think they'll probably steal one against the Warriors or the Cavaliers. I don't know if you can make a judgment if they don't win those games. We know they're not in that league. But even if they win two of those five, that means they hit the All-Star break. It's still six games under 500 and their very tenuous grip on that eighth spot in the West with, with the Portland Trailblazers team it's right now sitting only one game behind them. So these next this next week before the All-Star break and then the week after the All-Star break, which coincides with the NBA trading deadline, yep. it's going to be very critical not only for what the Nuggets do this year, but start it as they have to lay the groundwork for what they'll be doing over the next couple. Yeah, so their final game before the All-Star break takes place a week from tonight. That's the home game against the Timberwolves that Sean was just talking about. Then they're off until Thursday the 23rd because of the NBA All-Star break, that long break, don't get me started, uh, but that long break that takes place within uh, the NBA schedule. What's unique about that is that when they come back to work, on the 23rd, it'll be a road game against the Sacramento Kings, and that's also the NBA trade deadline. So it'll be very curious to see what the Nuggets roster looks like going into that Kings game. Now, we're still two weeks away from that, but folks, keep an eye on that to see what kinds of moves for now and for the future the uh, Nuggets and Tim Conley and Josh Kroenke decide that they want to do. Switching over to football. Yesterday, the coordinators, all three new coordinators for the uh, Denver Broncos, met with the media. You were there. Your overall impressions? Well, I think it was pretty impressed with the three men, and I think there was some authenticity there. In Mike McCoy's case, you could tell he's been a head coach. You could tell he's been a coordinator. He looked calm and comfortable. Joe Woods a little bit less so, like he understood the enormity of the job that he was getting into, and I think that's actually healthy. I think when you start seeing guys that seem overconfident, that's a concern. You think about Josh McDaniels walking in a few years ago and acting like he knew everything there was to know about coaching. I think the fact Joe Woods knew that he had some growth is probably a good sign. And then after uh, the guy stole the show, his special teams coordinator Brock Olivo, only 40 years old, coming over from Kansas City, worked under Dave Toe who interviewed for the Broncos head coaching position and by the end of that press conference I think about half of the assembled media was ready to try to go return a punt. Guy with a lot of fiery energy, a lot of fun you were worried about maybe Wade Phillips' personality dropping off and, and losing that kind of character they get the interviews with every week I think Brock Olivo is going to be your guy there uh, I'm relatively certain that uh, Ryan Green, our videographer, was probably wearing something with the Broncos on it um, while he was there because that's the only clothing that he owns. By the way, did you get in a fight with like Mike Kliss or Troy Rank while you were there? What happened? Uh, the band I, 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 You got in I a punching the match, fifth. didn't you? I, you got in a punching match. Names to protect the who, innocent. Who was it? No. Come on. It was somebody from NFL Network, wasn't it? Wasn't no, it? Like, I, I'm saying Just nothing. whisper. Wait, never mind. Mm -hmm. All right. It is your uh, Wednesday, your morning minute. Thank you for being with us. Make sure that you check out brand new podcast post Super Bowl with uh, our buddy Jake Plummer. That has been posted up to 5280sportsnetwork.com for today. If you haven't uh, been subscribing to Jake's podcast, make sure you check that out. It'll be posted up fresh to the site. Plus all the continuing columns, the podcasts, the videos, everything that you need. 5280sportsnetwork.com and milehighsports.com, the radio show, back with you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. For Sean Drotar, I'm Nate Lundy. See ya.